Hi guys, Dane here. Today I'm going to be making my start uh, on my review of The Lady of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is the second most recent Dune book at the time of writing. Um, this is part of like a new trilogy that started coming out. I think we've had one 2020, 21 and 2022. Um, I'm going to read you the blurb as always, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. From Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson comes Dune, The Lady of Caladan, a brand new novel in the internationally best-selling Dune series. Lady Jessica, mother of Paul and consort to Duke Leto Atreides, the choices she made shaped an empire, but first the Lady of Caladan must reckon with her own betrayal of the Bene Gesserit. She has already betrayed her ancient order, but now she must decide if her loyalty to the sisterhood is more important than the love of her own family. Meanwhile, events in the greater empire are accelerating beyond the control of even the Reverend Mother, and Lady Jessica's family is on a collision course with destiny. So let's check some tabs. I will warn you that as always a lot of these tabs are the quotes at the start of the chapters because A, they're some of the deepest bits, B, they kind of um, parallel what's going on in the story and C, it kind of helps to avoid spoilers as well. So here from the Sardaukor battle training manual, the danger posed by an enemy is directly proportional to the fear he inspires. And I always enjoy seeing like how water is treated on Arrakis. And we get this, so Raven steps up, he removed his mouth covering, coughed enough to loosen phlegm and spat on the ground, a gesture that would have startled the Arrakis natives. Oh, and then we get, because uh, we always get references to the litany against fear, I actually have fear is the mind killer tattooed on me. Um, but Lathea, one of the uh, Bene Gesserit, she's like super powerful and she gets one of the acolytes to basically lose themselves in the litany against fear. So they're just overtaken, all they can ever do for the rest of their lives is to repeat the litany against fear. Okay, a, a quote from Count Hesemir Fenring, Private Conversations with Emperor Shaddam IV. In order to achieve great things, one must first aspire, and that's where most people fall short. They have no spark to ignite the brilliant flame that leads to achievement. Very true of our own world as well. Uh, and then Count Fenring gets some of the uh, Caladan, uh, what they call Moonfish, gets some of it sent to uh, Arakeen, the capital of Arrakis. And Leto goes, fish on Arrakis, a pleasant irony. And that's true, fish on a, as a food on a planet that, where water is, you know. Okay, the wisdom of Muad'Dib. It is possible to fail in a school lesson and then, using the same discredited data and methodology, to succeed in life which I think has happened to all of us. We get a reference to uh, the Fremen distilling bodies into water, which I always think, always think is cool. I believe it's called a death still that they put them in, and they get all of the water from people's bodies so that they can reuse it. We get some wisdom from the Mother Superior. You do not throw away a sharp knife just because you might cut yourself with it. A quote from Baron Vladimir Harkonnen in discussion with his mentor, Peter de Vries. Even predators have rules if you can survive long enough to learn them. And a quote from an ancient admonition thought to be from Old Earth. A person's beauty can be like a spider's web, so fascinating and appealing, although it conceals a deadly, murderous purpose. And here from the Choam director's meeting notes, Camouflage is a critical survival skill, not only for exotic animals, but for astute business leaders. Again, another quote that's very true, true for our own world. And a Fremen aphorism, even if we gouge out our eyes, we cannot unsee the truth. Even if we cut out our tongues, we cannot unspeak the truth. The truth is permanent. And it's also not subjective. And uh, again, Raban is on Arrakis and he's not wearing a still suit. It says, he could feel the sweat pouring off of him and evaporating into the air and it felt liberating. He was Glossu Raban, the Count of Lankivale, and he could purchase as much water as he needed. So it's kind of being wasteful, but to show his uh, wealth, which again, you see that quite a lot in general. Um, just got the one tab for you guys today, and that is another quote. Uh, the depth of a wound matters less than how close it strikes to the heart from the Assassin's Handbook. And uh, that's a particularly good one because, again, that re re relates to the wider plot as a whole as well. Alright, so we have a Zensuni saying here, measure the journey not in distance, but in the toll it takes on the heart. I think that's very good. And one final quote I wanted to share from Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. The enemy of my enemy is still an enemy, no matter what they say. Harkonnens do not forget. And that's a very Vladimir Harkonnen thing to say. So yes, Dune, The Lady of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Um, it does fall into a bit of a lull, which just seems to happen with these books. The second book is always a bit weaker than the first and third, but I did still very much enjoy reading it. And I'm looking forward to The Heir of Caladan, which is the newest one. It literally only came out a couple of months ago. And it's on its way out to me at the moment, so I'm sitting here and waiting for it to come. Can't wait for that. But overall, I gave Dune, The Lady of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson a four out of five. So there we have it, that's what I made of Dune, The Lady of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. As always, don't forget to let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.